If you are using the inventory items and the list is longer than is able to be displayed on one page, another way that you can simplify this process is you can add categories to the items and then sort by categories. For example, if you're a clothing retailer, you might say men's shirts, men's pants, men's socks, women's shirts, women's pants, women's socks, etc. And then if you search on those categorizations, then you would, you would be able to touch the category or search on the category and only items that are categorized for that category would, would display. The other way you can do it is you can just say, I know the title of this starts with test. So I want to see what's there. And if you start, the more you type in here, the more restricted it is. So now every item on display in this instance only has the word test in it somewhere in the item name. And as you, if we take that away, obviously there's more items and you can see how that works. So there's a couple of, of you know, ways to simplify this as well as you, um, as you get advanced into the features available within this application. What I haven't shown and what I want to show now is a uh, ability to process a cash or check transaction. So this application is designed to process credit cards, but it's also designed to capture the fact that you've done a cash sale or a check sale. It doesn't actually process them, but it records them in your transaction history and your end of day reporting. So what we're going to do is a quick cash sale ad hoc item and show the difference between how cash and check works compared to credit cards, what the process looks like. We have an item in inventory, it's $50, validating the, that what I'm selling to the consumer is correct. Again, the tax rate is applied. And now, rather than swipe the card through the reader, which is kind of how this app thinks it's going to start, you simply press pay by cash or check. It brings up a new screen and you can record a couple of items, the consumer name, and the check number. Now one thing that you can do, we don't have a separate cash and a separate check function, but if it's a cash sale, you simply type in cash. If it's a check sale, you type in the check number. Either way, it will be something that is captured and stored. You press charge and the transaction will complete. Again, this is not actually calling out for an authorization. It's simply logging the transaction in the cloud database in your transaction history. And again, you have the same options of printing or sending an email receipt to the consumer. But if we look back in our history, I now have a transaction for 5275 that says number 1234 instead of my card number's last four digits. If I had put cash in there, it would have said cash instead of one, two, three, four. But it, it, it's, a, it's a full capture of all the tender types that you accept as a merchant, cash, check, and credit.